Welcome again to North Carolina, where in the mountains west of Asheville, a number of resort destinations have taken up golf croquet in a very serious manner. There are 15 or 20 croquet clubs in this area. Four of them have gotten together to host the 2022 Golf Croquet Nationals. We've already posted a number of doubles competitions from Sapphire Valley. And today we're at Highlands Falls there north of Highlands. Thanks to Google Earth for the flyover. As we come into Highlands Falls, you can see this croquet facility, that bright green patch there. Using the Google Earth time slider, you can reconstruct it. That patch was a probably a par three on the golf course till about 2012 when they built the clubhouse and started with croquet. The current Toulon complex was finalized in 2018 or 19, and this is how it looks now from Brian Hovis's drone early in the morning on the day of the semifinals. It appears to have its own dedicated clubhouse. The lawns are laid out fortuitously north and south, so the boundaries can correspond to the cardinal points of the compass. The two semifinals are being played at the same time. Brian Hovis is covering the first one from that white tent on the right, and Paul Newbecker will be covering court two on the left. This, then, is the USCA Golf Croquet Nationals in May of 2022. A few of the folks involved are Jeff Sue as tournament director, and Mike Albert as tournament manager, and on this video, Brian Hovis. This semifinal features Blake Fields from Mission Hills at 15 and a half. He's the most accomplished player at this age since Matthew Essek. He's already won two doubles nationals, one with Sharif when he was 12 and one with Muhammad Kamal last year when he was 14. He's taking on one of his major mentors in Sharif Abdelwahab, a giant in American and world croquet. Sharif has, I think, 18 national titles. Of those, uh, he has four singles in golf croquet, one singles championship in American rules, and he won the nine wicket singles last year. Looks like Sharif won the toss. He'll naturally elect to go first and will play blue and black as a result. Their dynamic grades aren't all that far apart. A lot closer than their ages, that's for sure. Matthew Essek and Tom Balding are playing the other semifinal over on court two. Paul Newbecker is doing the video on that one, and we'll put that one up after this one. You can learn the basics of golf croquet in about five minutes, which is probably why it's so popular. But it is tactically very rich. You have to pay close attention to what comes in the next four turns. And that's why even a master tactician like Sharif has to take his time to decide what to do occasionally. Of course, all the little tricks of the trade, not to mention the shooting skills required, can take years to develop. I'm not sure how this works from the facility's point of view, but I think the spectators, just by sitting in those chairs, accept the liability of being hit by flying objects. If there's a plank, protector they're pretty safe but if it's just a grass edge that grass can launch a croquet ball like it's a Cape Canaveral.
I think Blake's dad got him into croquet at Mission Hills, where he was a protege of Ben Rothman, thus the Solomon Grip. And yes, Ben would have showed him how to do this, but very few can follow those instructions successfully. He needs to clear red, but as a result, Blake draws first blood at hoop one and gives the offside direction. We've mentioned this before, but even though long clearances and bouncing bomb hoop shots are more dramatic, these long setup shots are of at least equal importance. Turnabout's fair play, clearing the wrong ball, leaves a hoop opportunity. The first time my wife saw Sharif do this, I thought her eyes were going to bug out of her head. As you know from watching YouTube and Facebook, Sharif is an accomplished videographer himself. A major benefit of an excellent setup like that is it forces the opponent to waste his shot trying to clear you instead of setting up for himself. Yeah. The third hoop in a row is going to be decided by a dramatic but wrong ball clearance. Here using the Egyptian technique and an odd numbered hoop in order to get down to the next hoop. The first eight golf croquet world championships were won by Egyptians with their hard hitting style. They've only won one of the last five though. Reg Bamford won two of those, and Ben Rothman is the defending golf croquet world champion. I need to get an interview with Sharif about whether the success of other playing styles has affected how the Egyptians think about the game or not. As a boundary ball, Black is an outside agency, and Blake would be able to move it if he wanted to, if it was in his way. I only slowed this down to emphasize the randomness of golf croquet. Okay. 
if immovable elements off the court and pair your backswing, you can move the ball in along the line of your original shot. If your target's less than six yards away, though, both balls have to be moved to maintain their relative distance. Blue is off sides, but he got there on that clearance shot on red, and this is probably at least half the reason he did that. Blake waited until blue was marked in until he decided what to do next. He got the right one that time. I assume he was planning that to make sure Red wasn't hampered by the hoop.
Blue doesn't have much of a hoop shot, and red can take care of black, so why not? And now he's thinking about how to get two hoops out of this, not just one. And from 70 feet away, it's by fractions of an inch. Not just the clearance, oh no. He also got yellow wired from blue and got black legally off sides on the way to hoop nine.
clear me five times in a row, will you? I'll show you, old man. Sharif once told me in an AC game, Dilly, you can't hide from me. Pretty much true. That's hoop 10, they're contesting. I didn't slow this down just for the weird effect on the bird song. Look where black ends up. Because yellow's a ways away, he could have considered clearing black here. Once again, his objective is to clear red. But look what else he gets. When Reg Bamford came back from 6-2 down in Game 5 of the 2013 Worlds, he hit a shot just like that to put his striker ball on the line in front of hoop 13 for the winning shot. I've always wondered if it was intentional.
And because Blake got that great clearance on black, blue now has to come back. Hard to call that a miss, the margin was so close. Pretty nice scoreboard they use here. They probably don't use second colors much, though. It's not just about power for this Egyptian. And just to prove it, he'll do it again. What a game. The youngster leads four to two at the turn, but Sharif takes five of the last six hoops to win the first game of the best of three, seven to five. So give us a like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when game two is coming out, probably tomorrow. In the meantime, check out the sponsor of this tournament and of our channel, the United States Croquet Association. Everything you want to know about all the different forms of croquet is available through the USCA.